I will probably, like I, I said, I will only be accepting random challenges, but there's probably some title challenges in the list. And uh, because of, uh, I'm guessing, how low of a percentage of all the challenges they constitute, I don't seem to be hitting any of them. So I think maybe at some point I will do some scrolling just to get some uh, higher rated traffic as well. But for the most part, I'm um, I'm planning to click the accept random challenge button for the for the entirety of the stream. Uh, what's the best food for chess? Uh, I personally, uh, when I play tournaments. I eat breakfast and then dinner. I don't eat anything in between. For me, it's extremely difficult to play on a full stomach. I don't know why I played c5. The bishop on a5 doesn't actually get captured. Well, I mean, it will get captured on c5, but... Yeah, sure. That's, uh, that's not very sporting, but... Bishop, bishop c5 does appear to be a very large mistake. <clears throat> uh... So I personally just can't play on a full stomach. Um, uh, on the other hand, Kasparov in his prime uh, was rumored, and I think those rumors are true. I think that the legend says that Kasparov in his prime would have a, a, a full stake a half, a minute, a half an hour before the game uh, and then go and play chess. And for me, like, this is completely unthinkable. I would just fall asleep at the board. I would also have digestion issues, but mainly I think I would just fall asleep at the board. I really don't know how he did it. It sounds completely alien to me. I really, really, really don't understand how you can do that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the stories are not lying either. So let's look for, like, one, one title challenge somewhere. I've scrolled past a few, but I'm. Um, let me just do a full scroll once, see what's in there, and then pick. Pick something, and then we'll go back to random, uh, random challenges. So, f uh, opinions will differ greatly about the best food for chess. I think. Uh, 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 a lot of people think that, let's say, having a chocolate bar with you at the game to uh, to have a bit of chocolate, like towards the fourth hour when you start flagging, and your energy kind of drops down a bit, and uh, and you uh, you feel like a little bit of a you know sugar high might help with the with your concentration. I've seen a lot of people do that. On occasions, I've done that myself. Uh, I also. Um, normally during the game I drink water and then I would drink uh, I would drink like a cup of coffee if it's provided somewhere if it's you know easily available I would drink like a cup of coffee once the first time control is over uh, thanks very much for the sub angry dragon uh, we do appreciate the support yeah the best food is no food is sort of my approach uh, I would I would agree with Hans there Let's give this another like five seconds and then maybe abort this one because there's really not very much point in me uh, waiting for five minutes for this to start. Uh, I've always wondered if, if any players are taking study drugs. I, I don't think very many people would, you know, readily, readily confess that, people, that they're taking study drugs, but... Um, it would be very, very uh, difficult for me to believe that this has never been attempted in the history of chess. Uh, thanks very much for the sub reboot, and uh, yeah, we do seem we do seem to have the game going now. So let's uh, let's play. Oh uh, yeah, coffee and energy drinks are you know I, I haven't actually seen very much in a way of energy drinks during tournaments outside of uh, you know Hikaru's sponsored can of Red Bull. This is kind of really, really old theory, which I have not revisited in in many a time. Might be D7, eh? 
I mean, the, the main theory starts with knight c6 here, but knight bd7 is definitely something that you can play if you want. This is this is the line that Tapalov quite famously beat me with, uh, with the black pieces in the St. Louis World Champion, San Luis World Championship, not not St. Louis. Um, but he played uh, sort of the uh, the most critical, the, the 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 sharpest line there, which is not this. This is sort of fine for black, but it's I, I think it's slightly preferable for uh, for white these types of structures. Although I'm not sure what I'm basing this belief on. Maybe it's just completely fine because I, I think it would have been better if my bishop was on uh, on e3 here and not g3. I think on g3 it's a little bit too much out of play. Yeah, the more the more I think about it, the more I wonder why I was so so happy about getting this position. It just doesn't feel doesn't feel like I will enjoy playing it all that much. The bishop really is completely misplaced on g3. I'm probably kind of worse here already. I did not spend any time in the any kind of protracted for a long time in the UK. Uh boring chess. Is b4 already a threat? I mean maybe it is, but I kind of I can't afford to play around it. I would like eventually to maybe play a four just to um just to bring my, my bishop on g3 into into the game. And this actually appears to unless I've blundered something, this is actually a huge improvement for me. Because if I get to play uh c four, I have successfully yeah, rook a eight is a very clever reply and I mean not not very difficult, but definitely the right reply here. But uh structurally at the very least, this has been a market improvement for me because the on C th on C three and B two those two pawns were uh definitely uh easily targetable for black and on B three and C four I think I will have a an easier time uh defending them. My position is still not that great though. Takes takes knight d three is actually very annoying here. I'm probably still worse actually. But I still feel like this is an improvement compared to what I had previously. How's Tyrell? I don't know. Yeah, I've. It's really remarkable, isn't it, people? Just how much they killed everybody's interest in that in that entire fandom with that season eight. Like, they've done they've done something which really appeared completely unthinkable, and they've destroyed one of the one of the most dedicated fan bases in the world. Uh, with that with that one abomination of a season. It's it's really quite an achievement. Yeah, it's like that that famous X, uh, XKC. Yeah, I should be playing faster. I am getting completely outplayed in this game, by the way. Just sort of, I, I want to be on the record here to say that my opponent here played this game a lot better than I have. And uh, I expect now to lose it, and I expect to lose it deservedly. Bishop b5, queen f4, like, there's so many things wrong with my position. Yeah, queen b2 is, is not bad, but that's kind of an improvement for me, because I might not... Like, this is sort of manageable, compared... Like, this endgame is still bad, but compared to some of the other things that could have happened to me, this maybe constitutes a kind of a best-case scenario. Although, like, clearly, if this is best-case, you you really, really don't want to think about the worst cases. Cause yeah, this is this is just horrendous. Yeah, I'm still I'm still losing. Yeah. It's there's there's just nothing here that is not bad for me. It's just a very, very poor position. Yeah, we get the take on F six, but even that position is uh, you know, very, very poor. Okay. This is surprising because this this is actually a is this three zero or 
three three one. I think the the relevant question is if there is increment, I probably do not lose this position ever. If there is no increment, it's a whole it's a whole other topic, of course. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure I was completely lost at at, at least one point in this game. So. Well played to my well played to my opponent, and I do feel like I was somewhat amnestied towards the end of it. <laughs> 